Hey guys, welcome to the next Smoke and Flame quick tip. Now this one's going to be uh, a result of uh, at our work we just upgraded to uh, Flame 2014 and there's a new matchbox node called the variable node and that lets you link um, expressions um, through the matchbox node and also rename tools through the matchbox node. So this one's going to be about image based lighting inside of Smoke. So the first thing I'm going to do is back click and do new color source and I'm just going to make this three seconds, uh, not 30 seconds, three seconds, and just click create. Now I'm going to open it as a sequence and select it and go to effects, create connect effects. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to load in this setup. And it's just here. Sorry, matchbox. Here we go. So I've just loaded this up. And you see what it's spat out is an action setup. And if I press escape, you see. There's an IBL node which is apparent to the camera, so it's set to back and an IBL node just on its own, which I'll explain uh, why um, in a second. So if we double click on this, obviously because these came from Flame, these are all grayed out and you can't toggle or tweak any of these values. But um, through the magic of the new uh, IBL uh, controller, a uh, little matchbox node that's a variables matchbox, you're able to actually change the name of the parameters you link to. Now, you could always do this before an action if you're on the flame. And from the action bin, you can link them to axes. But the annoying thing was is they were linked to the X value. So you'd, you kind of have to guess or you'd have to leave a note. And it was a little bit uh, annoying. So literally all I've done to change um, to link these was literally just go into the animation tab when it lets me. And um, you see these are all... If I look at the intensity, 100 on this, and then I look at the action one, whoops, double click, and look at the action one and press escape, and then look at the IBL and do shift tab, you see that is actually linked to the variable softness X, variable softness intensity. So it's literally just through linking. And the way that these were actually changed, if I, um, if I just tab over, um, this is the IBL controller XML, which will be included with the download, and you see... Um, if I just find intensity um, or just, yeah, intensity, it'll show you. So literally just change the name of what you want to control if it's for another value and it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Now, the with all that out of the way, now you can control IBL um, straight within uh, Smoke, which you couldn't do before um, very easily. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just set, load an example um, and I'm just going to go to read file and just go to my bookmark. And I've got a little panorama I took with my iPhone of my one of the flame suites at our work. You see it's a lat long map. It's not the best res. It was on my iPhone. But this is just to kind of get the point across on um, how IBL works inside of um, Smoke and Flame. So I'm just going to swipe to the left and then select the action, press escape, and just alt double click. And before I do that, go to node preferences and then go to rendering. Oh, sorry, actually in preferences. And I'm just going to turn off auto image. And I'm just going to alt double click on that and then just press extract. And then I'm just going to shift alt and kiss the panorama in there. And if I press F4 on the action, you see it's a little out of the whack right now. And that's because um, these are linked to my values in my IBL. So the first thing we're going to do is just um, back click on the action and go set as context. And then double click on my matchbox and press 1. And the first thing I want to do is just zero out my uh, controls for my rotation X, Y, Z. So just control click, control click, and control click. Once it thinks, there we go. And we're back to its default. So these are all linked to what you'd expect. So intensity is the intensity of the shader. Softness is a blur that applies and diffuse is, gets rid of, because um, by default, IBL is a very reflective uh, gives you a very reflective surface, but you can tweak that with the diffuse offset and the softness X, Y. So if I change the field of view, that's what you'd expect. Um, if I did 75 and oh, it's freaking out. I'll just put this back to 45. And there you go. You see it tweaks the camera field of view, which we can change um, and, and interact with here. So the first example of this I'm going to show you is um, I'm just going to press escape. And you see, I've given you two renditions, and um, for now, I'm just going to hide this one. And for this example, I'm going to load in the uh, the actual B uh, that we use for the 3D depth of field. So I'm going to go to Action Bin, and then go to Import, and just drag up. And I'm just going to go to my my uh, bookmark uh, just here, and change this to FBX, of course. And I'm just going to select that, 
and I'm going to leave it on create low copy and load and it's going to complain because this is on my laptop. So I'm just going to press continue and give it a sec. And it's thinking, there we go. Now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to change, unpipe this because if this is set to back, you want it to be the child of the main camera and that's going to be this guy. So I'm going to go hold uh, alt shift and just make that apparent to my guy here. Press F4 and give it a second. And then I'm just going to do control I to turn off icons just so it's going to update. And you see now if I uh, control space bar and zoom in, you see now it's uh, it's actually interactively lighting our 3D model based off um, our IBL, which is exactly what we want. And um, you know, uh, obviously this is a big model and it's pretty heavy and it's on a laptop, so it's not going to be super interactive. But if I just tweak a couple of these values and I just go, uh, if I go to uh, uh, spacebar O and do orbit, you see right away it's going to lose the B, which is because there's a weird uh, value coming from Maya. So I'm just going to press delete to undo that. Give it a second and press delete again to catch up there we go now if um if we go back to and control swipe to the ibl controller and double click and then press one we can see how these controls have a uh, result over the lighting so i'm going to press this up to 150 and give it a second um you see now it's obviously affecting the lighting on the uh the geometry so i'm going to go back to 100 not 10 but we'll give it a second uh, 100 so there's 100 it's doing pretty much what we want but again sometimes you don't always want it to be a super reflective uh, surface like that and to get around that you can pump the diffuse offset up so I'm going to pump this up to 1200 and give that a second to calculate and you'll see we get a nice diffused uh, a diffused kind of uh, reflection happening just on the model and it really um, it really helps uh, you know this is not the same as the reflection node because you can feed in um, lat long maps and the other thing to note is with this tool by default um, it's looking for a cylindrical image and this is a lat long so a cylindrical image but again if this was a different format you could always go to the uh, the map convert and then if you shift alt that in you can tell it what the input is and what you'd like it to be output as so you could always c cater it to be um, what you need for this tool so I'm just going to throw that away and then press F4 and then press one give it a second it's struggling a little bit if i double click on the matchbox again and press f4 f4 oh, sorry one and just put my diffuse offset down to 10. this will bring it back to a normal value which is going to make it way more reflective but again we because it is um all linked to the uh the guy and i scrub along here it's going to be a bit slow but you see the 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 texture actually gets mapped properly just like you'd expect with IBL and it's all controllable from out here um, which is pretty cool I think um, so that's it in its most basic form now sometimes you want to use this um, not just for uh, lighting stuff like this but where you would actually have a different background so say if this background um, was going to go you know it's literally there just for lighting but then you had something to put it on so you'd want to kind of hide this now that's why I saved this with two two nodes now for the purpose of this it's going to be super slow with this B, so I'm just going to grab in a new, um, I'm just going to load in another version of the IBL setup and just go up one and just load that in. So I've got a clean one here and this other guy here, and if I escape, you see it's exactly where we were, a nice clean slate. So I'm going to alt double click on that again and press extract and then just shift alt so that guy's in there again. I'm just going to press F4 and again, just for this one, F4, I'm just going to zero out these values put these to zero and it's thinking there we go now if I look at this and press F4 still doing some weird stuff and maybe I need to reset my camera as well and it's still not liking it uh, it's this this IBL controller sorry I got confused there for a second so F4 and I just uh, control click on these control click control click Okay, now they're um, nice and zeroed out. And for the sake of this, I'm just going to unpipe this B and just alt click and throw him away just so this thing uh, speeds up. So now, and if I'll throw away that old controller. Now if I look and set this one as context as well, and set that to 1, and then press F4. Right now it's an empty room, and if I spacebar O, you see now it's orbiting like you'd expect. Now I'm going to bring in just for the sake of this um, and import 
Um, I'm just going to go to the default home directory of uh, 3DS and I'm just going to bring in, um, just for the sake of this, the teapot and just press load. Now, you see this, um, the textures are influenced um, no matter if I double click on that and F4. Um, if you do have textures, you see that they still do uh, contribute to the, um, to the lighting, so they still contribute to the overall map. Now, the other thing that's um, to note is why this has, uh, if I go Alt 2, the two IBLs. Now, like I said, sometimes you don't want, um, sometimes this is just a reference for lighting and then the background's going to change. Now, the problem is, is because this comes from Flame and you can't just uh, grab him and turn this to use his back off, which would turn it off. Um, it doesn't work like that, so we've had to get around it in another way. So if I actually um, grab this IBL and Alt-Shift him to the Geo, um, not that one, and then select this original IBL and press H, you see it's still taking into account um, the IBL. But the great thing with this now is we could... We could swap out the background now and put whatever we wanted back here. But also now is if we wanted to make this, um, if we press one, if we really wanted to make this uh, nice and diffused and soft, if we did 1200 as the value, we see that will blur out. And um, again, if we had a different background in here, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't contribute to it because it's going to be a separate background. So that's it for this um, quick tip and a uh, new tool. Hopefully you guys will find really, really useful inside of Smoke. Um, Stay tuned for more, play more to come.